Remember back when you're just a single cell? No, you don't. Because a fertilized egg is a few trillion cells and a lot of dirty diapers away from being able to lay down memories. Hit it. Now, I'm not saying that your textbook's wrong, but put the book down. This is science with toes. Science with toes. But look at you now. You're like 37 trillion cells strong. And the balance between cell division and cell death is what allows you to grow, develop, change, and use a loofah. And thank goodness for Jasmine Williams. She studies what happens when cells go rogue by dividing too much, specifically in breast cancer. But before we could get to that, I needed a little refresher. So, can you tell me briefly, mm -hmm. what is a cell? A cell is one unit Boop. that keeps things from coming in Boing. and keeps things from going out. Okay. Um, and it contains different parts. So those parts have structures, and that structure is important for what it actually does. Okay, yes. so within the barrier, Inside, yes. there's stuff that does stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, that's mm -hmm. very clear, okay. very clear. You got that? Uh-huh, uh -huh. um, what are some of the things that do the things? Um, so my favorite, I would say, would be a nucleus. Mmm, the nucleus. Yes, have you heard of that? I not only have heard of it, yeah. I saw my very own nuclei. How'd they look, was it pretty? They were beautiful. <laughs> they were beautiful until they got attacked by some little, yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay, so the nucleus, and what's in the nucleus again? There's DNA in there. So okay. that's giving all the instructions to tell your cell what to do, when to do it, how wow. to do it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So what else is in that cell? The mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Okay, mitochondria. Yeah. So mitochondria are giving you energy in your cell, pumping you with ATP. Yeah. You like ATP? Love ATP. Yeah? Love it. Huge fan. Good. Huge fan. Um, the most common song, everyone comes up to me and says, Tom, Tom, I know you make these science raps. You've got to make a song called, You Down With ATP, Yeah, You Know Me. Um, How'd that go? I refuse to do that. It's mm. too easy. It's too easy. <laughs> it's too too easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you, you, you tell me that there's these structures mm -hmm. and they have functions. Yeah. But could you kind of tell me why that's important? Well, I would say that shape matters okay. in a cell. Mm -hmm. So if you have things that are the wrong shape, they might do the wrong thing or nothing at all. Okay, do you have an example? Uh, so my favorite is vitamin D. D. As you know. Yes, I do know that. So. Vitamin D, can you, what should I picture when I'm Just picture the sun. Just picture the, the sun, sun. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so Perfect. you can get vitamin D through your food, but you mostly get it through the sun. Okay. So, so the sun hits me, sun comes I make in. some vitamin D molecules. Yes. Okay. So now those molecules mm -hmm. have to signal to give information to your cell. Mm -hmm. And the way they do that is through the vitamin D receptor. Here's my cell. Here's the vitamin D. Yeah. Do you Going. need the receptor? Oh, here we go. Boom! <laughs> okay. So that's, that's this the This is receptor. the receptor. Okay. Now say I was like... Yeah, brr, wrong shape. Brr, it's not going to fit. Not going to work. Shape, mm -hmm. structure, form, leads to function. Yeah. But I'm also really curious about the the classic picture of the cell in the textbook. Okay. Because I remember when I first joined a lab, I mm -hmm. was looking at brain cells, neurons. Mm -hmm. They didn't even look like the neuron picture Weird. from the textbook, right? Yeah. You know, I realized that these cartoons are just models, but they're lies. They're they're horrible, awful lies. <laughs> and I was it was like it was, oh, a, no. it was a cynical <laughs> moment for me. Yes. Tell me what a model is and why it's good to have a model. Well so I think having a model allows us to study the questions that we want to study in a very simple way. So, have you ever seen maybe a model on a billboard? Uh, you mean like a... Supermodel? Like yeah, I sure have. <laughs> yes. Yes, I and have. what did he or she look like? Maybe really nice hair, really white teeth. Really red hair, yeah. a lot of freckles. That sounds like um, you, Tom. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. Their supermodels are a little exaggerated. They're a little exaggerated, okay. so you pay attention to particular features on the model. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. fair to say? That is, that is, I get so that. So you know exactly what to look at. So I think that's what maybe the textbook is doing too. I see what you did there. The textbook picture yes. exaggerates certain features. Yeah. It doesn't include everything exactly. from reality, yeah. but it takes the important stuff and makes like a cartoon version of it. Perfect, then when you see it, you know what to look for. Since a model is a simplified version of reality, a lot of people think of them like that billboard. They highlight certain things while obscuring others. But models can do more. Models should also be able to make a prediction about how reality will change when you modify one variable. This is true of animal models and cell culture models, both of which Jasmine uses to explore how vitamin D might be influencing the spread of breast cancer. As a model of how vitamin D can influence breast cancer, mm -hmm. what, what are your options? I can take a mouse and give that mouse vitamin D. D. 
I can put some breast cancer cells in a dish and just squirt vitamin D in there. And what are the advantages of each? Ding, ding, ding. So I would say animal model has most of the parts that humans have. So you have an immune system, you have blood circulating through the body. There are a lot of different things that are important to cancer that we can model with the mice. Mm -hmm. And for cell culture, it really gives you a lot of variability. So you can study, you can put a lot of vitamin D in the cells, you can see how far you can push the cells, and you don't have to feel too bad. Got it. So over here you've got like, this is closer to reality. Yes. This one allows you to do more stuff to it. Exactly. And both are important. Both are important. And you probably, somebody somewhere is probably looking at the humans themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Like That's like clinical trials. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're all part of the same effort. Exactly. Wow, and what have you been finding? What's, what's kind of the relationship there? Yeah, so we think, and this is very top secret results, so we think. <laughs> it's really top secret, don't say it. <laughs> we think that maybe it's changing when your cell, when the cancer cell decides to go from one place to another, that it responding to vitamin D is very important in that stage as breast cancer spreads throughout the body. And that's the bad part. That of is cancer. not what we want, yes. Okay. And so to do that, we have cells that are actually glowing green. Whoa. Which is crazy. That actually is something I recently saw with Lauren. Mm -hmm. She showed me her staff, these bacteria were going green. Yeah. Um, and I, but I, she didn't explain why. Why do, how can you make a cell glow green like that? Yeah, so remember we talked earlier about the nucleus? I do. So we can change the instructions in a cell and add in a little additional information that will make the cell green. Awesome, so mm -hmm. you're changing which instructions it's expressing, yep. and all of a sudden it makes a protein, is mm -hmm. that right? A protein. It makes a protein that glows green, mm -hmm. and now you can see it. So we can it track it in an animal, like a mouse, or we can track it in a dish that we use. Right on, okay, this. so now you can see the cell, mm -hmm. and now what can you do in your experiments? So now we can add in vitamin D, we can take away the vitamin D from the mouse and see what happens to the breast cancer. So really we're using vitamin D as a tool to study some of the pathways that are important. D. Oh, okay, so the, the questions you're asking in this one little area mm -hmm. are, are applicable to larger questions exactly. in cancer. Yeah. You know, we talked about structure and function, mm -hmm. but cancer is this other thing, right? Mm -hmm. Structure, function, and dysfunction. Dysfunction, I would say. So, so how does studying dysfunction help you better understand the normal stuff and vice versa? Hmm, that's a good question, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> well, I would say that we are studying dysfunction to get back to function, to figure mm -hmm. out how you can repair a cell that's gone a little bit rogue, how you can get it back to center. So that actually helps people get healthier. That's a big deal. I hope so. Wow, okay, so you are gonna do some big things in the world of cancer. I'm gonna that's try. very exciting. I wanna give you a high five. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. If you wanna learn more about Jasmine's research, we've got a link in the description. If you've got any questions for her, write them in the comments. She'll answer in a follow-up episode later this year. You can also see more of Jasmine by clicking on some of our bonus features. We've got hashtag science fail, science vision, and reading framebow. But before we get to that music video, I had one last question for her. Now, I'm also very excited about something called the Golgi apparatus. Tom, what is the Golgi? <laughs> <laughs> I remember somewhere Way back in biology, we talked about the Golgi apparatus. I feel like that was the one that I skipped when I made my <laughs> models in bio class. <laughs> it has a cool structure. Mm -hmm. It looks like a stack of pancakes. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Right? Right? <laughs> and I think it like modifies the proteins, slaps some sugars on them, oh, nice. sends them to their location. Okay. Okay. And we wrote a song about it. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> models. Here we go. Chloroplast. Got it. Nucleus. Beautiful little genes. Pancakey stuff. What is the... Hello? Hey, you coming to the party later? Yep, yep. I'll be there. Okay, don't forget, you're in charge of dessert. Dessert. <laughs> Yo, so all uh, helps you keep it tight. Chloroplast make food alive. And the nucleus holds genes, yeah. I know the structure has a function, but I can't remember this one. I know the structure has a function. What is the Goji? Uh, I don't know.
know that shape I'm the real no lie, looks like pancakes mm -hmm. And I know form relates to function But how could I know just by looking at it? Wait, Whoa. think about the cell like a whole team mm -hmm. Nucleus has instructions, cow genes mm -hmm. They encode the structure of proteins Some gotta get shipped by the Golgi Go Which yeah. they call the apparatus That is, cause they can't sort and package And sacks get modified reactions Send the tools back, send the proteins on a safe passage uh, And that's not all there is Just a model that Helps us get it. Wow, the cell does a lot, and so we model that, model that, model, model like it's hot. Goji, you are so complex. I'm the real no lie, look like pancakes. I see that your structure's related to your function. Model that, model that, model, model like it's hot. I know the structure has a function, but I can't remember this one. I know the structure has a function. Verse two. As usual, it's up to you to write verse two. For full instructions, click on the music video link right over there, or go to sciencewithtom.com. And once again, it's so helpful to us if you click on Jane Goodall's face right there and subscribe to Science with Tom. Leave a comment with any questions you have. Get a tattoo that says, model like it's hot. And remember, if you stay bored, maybe boring. See you next time. Yo, so uh, helps you keep it tight. Chloroplasts make food with light And the nucleus holds genes, yeah I know the structure has a function But I can't remember this one I know the structure has